Well, our security director, Tim Moy, has joined us on the program today, and he's going to tell us about, you know, how we did it with the upcoming, with the rain that we had the last weekend. Friday and Saturday seemed to hurt, hit pretty hard. I know uh, all of the newscasts were saying, you know, you know, storm watch, storm watch, and we're right. expecting seven to eight inches of rain, I and mean, I think we got closer to four to five. But, you know, how did the community turn out for this weekend? Yeah, it, it, it came down pretty, pretty hard, hard yeah. no doubt about yeah. it. And the, the winds uh, mm -hmm. uh, caused some issues as well. Um, you know, we, we try to get ready for it as, as we always do with um, our staff, and, and that's both uh, with security, uh, maintenance, landscaping. Mm -hmm. uh, so we increased our, our personnel. I would say we had a surge of phone calls right around uh, five to six, which actually uh, overloaded our system. And, wow. and that is something that we're working on. But right. um, with the additional personnel out in the field, we were able to get out uh, on those calls for services as quickly as, as possible. And we had a pretty good response time uh, on that as well. So when people call security department during these kind of situations, what are what are their questions or are they or do they have concerns or is are they reporting a tree that's fallen or or some kind of issue that's happened? Absolutely. So uh, you name it, uh, whether it be a, a tree down, um, a drain clogged, um, um, maybe it's electrical uh, is out. And so that just keeps us running around right. all evening. And then, of course, after hours, uh, our security division is, is the uh, contact for the various um, departments to come out, whether it be landscaping or maintenance right. or some of our vendors uh, that'll um, for instance, roof leaks. I think we had about eight to ten roof leaks mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and so we bring out a specialized team to handle that. And obviously, we want to be able to respond to those uh, uh, quickly as well. So, yeah. and that rain was coming down so hard, the streets were, you know, the storm drains couldn't even keep up with them. So then you got the water overflow, which could right. possibly cause some damage and get into people's homes. Sure, and you didn't see that uh, so much, which was a good thing. Uh, we did uh, lose about 98 trees go down, wow. and, and so we're not sure exactly how many of those will be saved or not, but right. uh, that, that's quite a bit of trees. But you know, when you've got, uh, what, 30,000 plus trees, right. uh, overall it's a small number, but you know, um, yeah. 98's uh, quite a bit. Right, and uh, you know, there's the tragedy in Irvine, if you know of that, where the young girl was walking the dog out when it was raining really hard and a tree fell right, on her and she's right. uh, you know, in the hospital now. We wish her and her family well, but those are the kind of things we want to share with our community. That, you know, This is not the time to go out and walk your dog when the rain is really coming down and especially, like you said, when we have winds to that kind of sure. you know, magnitude, right. you know, it's better just to stay home. You know, walk the dog in the little patio instead of get out there and, and possibly have a, a tragic situation like that. Absolutely, if you if you can, and, and we recommend even if you need to run to the store, try to wait till the the, right. the storm lets up right. um, before you go out and venture. You know, it gets rough out there. The visibility is poor. Uh, the ra uh, the roads get pretty slick uh, right. to get out and about. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Right. Just, just plan it for another day. Exactly. Right. 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 Well, we want to talk about your good neighbor captain's training. That's going to be coming up on March 7th. Tell right. us a little bit about the good captain, the good neighbor captain program. Right. And what exactly are you looking for? Sure. Uh, great question. You know, and I will say that with the storms that were taking place, we got a, uh, a numerous calls from our building captains mm -hmm. specifically because they act as the liaison for their building, for their neighborhood, what have you. And when someone's not sure, they may call their captain up and say, hey, here's what I've got going on. And, and the captain and may you know, uh, know exactly who to contact, what have you, or has a good working relationship with someone on uh, in the VMS staff. Right. Uh, so that works out well. But we are trying to increase our numbers. Uh, right now, I, I can tell you that the uh, the Garden Villas has a very robust program. You know, the Garden Villas is a third of the third, the three-story buildings. They're doing a great job. We just want to replicate it right. and, and spread that throughout um, the, the community. You know, we've got... Mm -hmm. 12,736 manors, right. about 18,000 residents, yeah. and um, and each with their own unique neighborhoods as well. So mm -hmm. um, why not have uh, a representative who is, is willing to take on that, a little bit more leadership and to be able to uh, just be focused on, on their area specifically uh, and, you know, to build some friendships, mm -hmm. some camaraderie, uh, some partnership, right. and just to, to beautify that, that area. Um, and, and we want to make that work for you, uh, each of our smart So communities. is their area more like the cul-de-sac that they live in, or is it a couple of cul-de-sacs? Right, right. Uh, could, be. could be. So you, you, it depends on, on <laughs> that neighborhood. Right. So if, if you're within a, a larger building, mm -hmm. we, you may just be the building captain for that building. And the, the ideal number is about uh, building captain for 
uh, 10 to 12 manors. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're, we're not even close to that. And it could also be a cul-de-sac captain, mm -hmm. um, gate 11 it could be. You know, those are more residential right. um, yeah. uh, buildings, and so maybe it'd be, uh, again, a street, a street right. exactly. Yeah. So it, it depends upon the layout of, of the neighborhood. Okay. As well. What kind of responsibilities are you expecting from someone that volunteers to be a captain? Right. So there's a few things. Uh, one, it's it's working with your neighbors and, mm -hmm. and uh, addressing some issues. Maybe it's landscaping. Maybe it's maintenance uh, that comes up. Uh, it may be security. You know, the building captain program has components of a neighborhood watch right. built into its framework. Um, you know, it, it just makes sense that if you're a building captain and and you hear about something, you're going to report it. And so we're, we want to develop that relationship with security and with law enforcement mm -hmm. as well. So that's that that works out very well. And then for us in security, that's getting information out. Right. It's having that collaboration, that communication with our building captains. If we're getting hit with, let's say, bicycle thefts or some thefts out of car carports, and it's happening in a very specific area, mm -hmm. of course we want to let everybody know, but I specifically want to let those um, areas know. And so to be able to shoot something out to our building captains, hey, get this word out, talk to your neighbors, um, mm -hmm. you know, let them know about that. I call it situational awareness, being aware of your surroundings right. as well. And kind of like you have said in the past is that <clears throat> if, you know, security is really Really, you know everywhere and they're trying to do their job but they can't see everything so if you have eyes somewhere else right. that someone can help you out and you, know, you have a what is it see it report it one of those oh. slogans <laughs> that you have as well yeah those see kind something of, say something say, exactly right. that's it right. so you know one of those captains if they can help you out like you just said is you know hey in our area we've been seeing kind of some you know odd behavior maybe and then right. we can sort it out and, and get through that process quickly. Sure. So that's important to have that. So what other roles would they serve other than the captain? Part? Yeah, so, so the disaster preparedness piece mm -hmm. is, is critical as well. So we've got a disaster preparedness plan in the event of, let's say, a major earthquake where it's a 7.0 or above and, and our first responders are focused elsewhere or they can't get here. Right. The one unique aspect of the village is that we, we are self-contained. We have clubhouses, we have our own transportation, we have several hundred employees, we have a plan that, that we can put into place so that if we had to um, modify our clubhouses into a triage center, into a shelter, we, we have that capability. The building captains, and what we would like them to be able to do is in the event of an, an emergency, and, and first you want to make sure that, that you're okay, right. um, but then check on their neighbors. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that doesn't mean they have to give first aid or anything like that, but just check on their welfare, check on the structure of the building, and then we have a reporting uh, process where they can get that information up to what is called an incident command or, mm -hmm. or our, our own emergency operations center. And if, if you can think of about uh, how valuable that information will be for us. So that, that, is, a, that is a valuable piece. And right. we also are going to um, provide additional training if, mm -hmm. if you want it, um, first aid, CPR. Aid, yeah. But we're not going to right. mandate it. Right. And um, that's so important because if, if they give you the all clear for this cul-de-sac right. area, then you can put your focus on other areas sure. that might need you know attention right away. Absolutely, and, and so that, that information is going to be critical for us and, and it's all about prioritizing. Mm -hmm. So if we know we have a building collapse in, in a certain area or we've got multiple injuries, that's where we're going to send our resources first. And we may hear some other information that, hey, this is, uh, uh, we're okay here, um, then th th what we're going to send back is okay, shelter in place. Okay. Just stay inside and uh, uh, we'll get to you when we can, but right, right now we're going to focus on these other areas. Right. So this is some of the things that people will learn during this training process, right? Right. right. So you're just asking for people to, to call in and, and to be a part of this process and to register. They can give a call at 597-4237 and uh, that's going to be on March 7th. That's from noon to 2 o'clock in Clubhouse 7 in the main right. lounge. And your presenter is Joan Brown. Tell her, tell us a little bit about Joan. Yeah, Joan has been doing this for uh, quite a long time. She's been connected with our Disaster Pre uh, Preparedness Task Force. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe she has a nursing background and uh, an RN. She's a great uh, presenter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up there and speak for a while myself. I want to just talk about uh, what we're trying to accomplish here. Right. And, and uh, I, you know, we don't want to intimidate anybody. We don't want them to ask them to do too much. We understand what kind of a community this is. Right. But at the same time, there's a need uh, for it as well. Uh, Joan is going to do a, a great job for us. Um, so I'm going to introduce the, the building captain program. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. Joan's going to get more into the weeds, into the details mm -hmm. of the disaster piece as well. Right. And like you said, it's not something where, you know, you're asking for a huge commitment. Right. You're just asking for someone to take the leadership role within that 
community, that block, exactly, and kind of give a report as to what's going on, and also especially to communicate to the residents right. in right. that in that cul-de-sac or area that hey, we're, we got this covered, or we need to move on to this. Right, right, and it works both ways. Right. Uh, they can they can send us information. We can send them information and then disperse it. Sounds like a great program. We encourage all our residents to be a part of this. This is the Good Neighbor Captain's Training. It's going to be on March 7th. That's a Tuesday. That's from noon to 2 o'clock. They're going to be meeting at Clubhouse 7 in the main lounge, in the main lounge and the presenter will be Joan Brown. So we encourage you that if you're able to uh, help out your neighbors especially uh, to join this program and I think in the long run obviously it's going to help the community as it a is. whole. And you know that's all we want to do. In case there is an issue that we're prepared right. and we have a plan. Absolutely. Great. Right. Thanks for joining us today right. on the program. Thanks, That's Tim Moy. He's your security director over there at uh, across the street, actually, from the community center. But give them a call at 597-4237 to be a part of this program or just come on over to Clubhouse 7 on that March 7th from noon till 2 o'clock. We're going to be back with more of our program right after this.